Hi, my name is Robin Wong. In this video, I want to talk about a new lens that I got for myself, the Olympus M Zuiko 75 f1.8. In one of my recent videos, I mentioned that I got two new products. One was the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III, which I'm using to film myself in this vlog, as well as a new lens, a lens that I've been wanting to get for some time now. Finally, I got my hands on one, the Olympus 75 f1.8, it is now in my camera bag. Initially, the Olympus 75 1.8 wasn't really a lens that I'm desperately wanting to get, mainly because the focal length of an equivalent 150mm is not something that is easy to use for general photography. Besides, I also have the amazing 40-150 f2.8 Pro which serves as my main telephoto lens for my portraits, events, as well as wedding shoots. However, in my recent shoots, I've encountered more than one situation where I wish I had the 75 f1.8 lens with me. Therefore, in this video, I want to explore the four main reasons why I've decided to get the Olympus M Zuiko 75 f1.8 lens. Reason number one, to replace the Olympus M Zuiko 40-150 Pro in some situations. It is no secret that the Olympus 40 to 150 Pro lens is not a small lens, and it does take a huge space in my camera bag. However, I've come to realize that for most of my shoots, I don't need the reach of the long 150mm at the telephoto end. And furthermore, in some situations, I do think that the f2.8 is not bright enough for my shooting purposes. In such situations, the Olympus 75 f1.8 is sufficient to capture the shots that I need. 75mm is 150mm equivalent in 35mm format. Therefore, it is quite a long lens. Coupled with all my other prime lenses such as the 25 f1.2 and 45 f1.8, it makes sense to add the 75 f1.8 to the arsenal to minimize the space used in my camera bag. I'm not saying that the 75 f1.8 will completely replace the 40-150, I will still keep my 40 to 150 Pro. There are times when I do need that longer reach. And the 40 to 150 Pro is a fantastic lens by itself. I'll probably make a video talking about that lens sometime in the future. But if I can get away with a small lens, if I don't need that extra reach, the 75mm is the better choice. There is no denying that it is a lot smaller, a lot lighter. I can pack it into a smaller bag, this will allow me to handle the camera better and of course, I can move around much easier. Reason number two, to render extreme shallow depth of field. If you want to create a dreamy, blurry, bokeh background from Olympus OMD system, the best lens that you must have is the 75 f1.8. Although I've not had this lens before, I've borrowed the lens and I've used them in my wedding shoots as well as other photography assignment. Being a telephoto prime lens, the 75mm can compress the background, having less background to deal with, and this makes the lens very, very suitable for portraiture work as well. There are many times that I've shot my images taken with the 75 f1.8, and people have a hard time believing that these images were shot with a micro folded system. It is a general perception that micro folded system having a smaller image sensor cannot render blur background. And if you want that creamy, blurry, dreamy background, the 75 f1.8 is a must-have lens. If you truly scrutinize the area of blur rendered by the 75 f1.8, the bouquet quality is simply amazing. The blur is pleasing, it is buttery smooth. The background just slowly fades into blur beautifully. Reason number three, incredible image quality. The Olympus 75 f1.8 lens is one of the sharpest, if not the sharpest lens from Olympus M Zuiko lens lineup. It is even sharper than some of the Olympus M Zuiko Pro lenses, and it is the sharpest among all the f1.8 Prime Premium lenses. There is no denying that every single time that I use the 75mm f1.8, although I don't use it a lot in my shoots, maybe just about 10 to 20% of the time, a lot of the photographs that I've taken from the 75 f1.8, they are the keepers and they are the money makers. 
the images just pop. There's a lot of contrast. I like the color rendering from the Sony 5 f1.8 and the fine details, the amount of the fine details is just crazy. If I want to produce the kind of images to impress, the 75 f1.8 is the best choice. Also, the technical lens flaws are very well managed. There is no pincushion distortion noticed. The chromatic aberration is very well controlled. I'm, uh, I'm well aware that if you use the 75 f1.8 on a non-Olympus body, the purple fringing can be a problem. And in some very harsh situation, it can still be a problem if your subject is not in focus but the purple fringing is easily corrected in post-processing and it's not a deal breaker for me. The images come out sharp corner to corner and honestly, you get a lot for what you pay for in the Olympus 75 f1.8. I've used it for studio portraits, lifestyle product shots, food photography, people shots outdoor, wedding photography, and almost all kind of photography where the longer telephoto lens is required. Each and every time I use the 75 f1.8 lens, I come home with incredibly beautiful images, and my clients have always been happy with the images that I've taken with the 75 f1.8. Reason number four, I do intend to shoot more stage-related photography. I've been shooting mini concerts, I've been shooting live music performance, I've been shooting theater and also dance performance. A lot of stage photography will require a telephoto lens and me being the official photographer, I can go very near to the stage. I rarely have to zoom all the way to 150 mil, so the 75 mil is the right lens. And in a lot of these situations, the live music performance, the dance on stage and live theater, the lighting condition is rarely ideal, it is always dim, and dealing with low light situation, having the f1.8 wide open aperture is a huge advantage. If I'm using the 40 to 150 Pro, I would be using the f2.8. Say that if I need ISO 6400 to sufficiently freeze motion blur, using the f1.8 75 lens, I can get away with maybe ISO 3200 or even lower knowing that micro four third system is not the best when it comes to high ISO shooting. Being able to keep the ISO numbers as low as possible is important for me to maximize the image quality. In fact, in most situations, with ISO 3200 or 6400 and f1.8 open aperture, this was sufficient for me to achieve 1 over 100 to 200 of a second of shutter speed. This was sufficient to freeze minor motion. I know some of you will ask, Robin, why did you choose the silver color? There are two options, black or silver, and the reason I got the silver version was for practical purposes. In very low light environment, which I do shoot a lot with my OMD cameras, sometimes it is so dark that when I open the back, everything in the back just look pitch dark. And it is very difficult for me to differentiate which lens is from which, and I have to physically feel the lens in the camera back gauge the size of the lens to know, oh, this is 40 to 150, oh, this is a 25 prime, and oh, this is a 45 prime. All the lenses look the same in the dark, and they are so dark, the only telling difference is the size. When I have the silver version, it is a lot more reflective. It is actually very visible, and I can identify that, hey, this is the 75 lens immediately. I know that it is a very odd combination because my main camera is the EM1 Mark II. It is black in color, matching it with a silver lens. It is sort of like a fashion disaster. And I know that the 75 lens will probably match my EM5 Mark III better since my EM5 Mark III is silver. Nevertheless, for me, to be entirely frank, for me, it is always function over aesthetics. As long as the 75 f 8 produces the excellent results that I seek and it does its job, it doesn't really matter if it looks a little bit mismatched on my EM1 Mark II. There you go, I've shared my four reasons why I got the Olympus 75 f 8 and how it's actually working for my photography jobs and commercial shoots. I am not going to use the 75 f 8 a lot for my shutter therapy session. I think the 75 mm lens is a little bit too long for street photography. I prefer to use the 25 or the 45 lens when I'm shooting on the streets. 
I admit that the 75 mm lens is not an easy lens to use. It requires a longer working distance and you do need to step back quite a fair bit from your subject to have the enough coverage in your framing. However, if you find a use for the 75 mm lens, and it is a very specialized lens, if you do have some use for the lens, the images that you take from the 75 f1.8 lens will blow you away. I hope you have enjoyed the photographs that I've shared in this video. If you have owned the Olympus 75 mm lens and if you have used the 75 f1.8 in your own photography, please share your thoughts with me in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to this channel and I hope to see you again in the next one. Until then, please remember to go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.